So with myself, this would be similar to what the ladies wore in 1885 for their prairie dress. A lot of the married women would wear two pieces, a skirt and a top. The single girls would have a single dress on, which kind of signified who was married and who was taken at the time. So, and they all wore hats like this somewhat to keep the sun off their eyes. Um, the gentlemen of the time, we represent 1885 Northwest Mounted Police. The gentlemen at the time wore what they call a red serge. So you can see the red uniform. Some of them were really detailed with uh, yellow decals on the sleeves and shoulders, depending on the rank or position in the force. Um, the white going across their chest is what they call a haversack. It would actually hold their ammo or little trinkets that they needed for on the field. Um, you can see he has a holster on his waist, which they would have been carrying a, a handheld pistol at the time to draw out if they had any troubles or if they needed to use some force, I guess. The white gloves they're wearing on their hands or on the one member, those are what they call gauntlets. So they're heavy leather gloves. They would be used for on the trail or work. They protected their wrists and arms. You can see it's a lot heavier up top when they were on the battlefield from anything debris coming at them and whatnot. Um, the pants at the time are a trouser type pants or high waisted. They have the yellow stripe which changed to a different color um, depending as the years went on with the different ranks. And they all wore high field boots which protected them if they're going through brush and whatnot in the field. Um, the horse next to him we would be wearing what they call on his face a bridle. That one in particular is a halter bridle. Uh, the Northwest Mounted Police had the white band that you could see dignified or it would stand out in the field when the horses were coming across. And what it is, that halter bridle, uh, the metal bit that's in his mouth would actually unclip. They could take it out and tie their horse easily to the tree and put it back in if they had to hurry, uh, be, be in a hurry to get back onto their horse. Uh, the white rope around their neck is, um, they have a special knot, it's almost like a noose knot on it. And what it is is they untie that quickly to tie their horse, or if they came across some, um, I guess, bad people on the trail, they could use that, you know, to sling them up over the tree or whatnot. But um, that's what that was for. Uh, the saddle that he's particularly uh, riding in is a high cantled saddle. They either rode Western style or English style in the period. A lot of the gentlemen, when they first started, uh, none of them had any horse experience. So when they came into it, they're green, even though they admitted that they had horse experience. They often in the camps would first make them all ride bareback until they could gain their balance and then they earn their saddles. So with this particular saddle, it's all fully made of leather. Uh, the white roll in the back is a bed roll or a tent. So if they got um, sent away from the troops, they could set that up at night, sleep under or sleep on it to keep the weather off them, depending. And then that blanket underneath, the yellow with the black, uh, that's what they call a shabrack. So that blanket, um, had different lettering on it depending on the different forces or owner battalions. That one just has our Northwest Mounted Police stamp on it at the time. So um, they also carried rifles with them, where on the one side you can see a rifle scabbard. He doesn't have his gun on there currently right now. It's actually back on the display. But if he turns right around, you should be able to see it. The gun would slide right in there. Um, those ones were somewhat awkward for the time period because if you had to get on and off your horse, sometimes they were in the way but that your rifle would slide right in there so if you're riding on your horse and you got fired at, you could easily kind of pull it out and then protect yourself, I guess, or, or aim back at the enemy. So uh, the white helmet I forgot on the officer, uh, just to jump back over to him, is what they call a pith helmet. So they, uh, when they first left or started up this force, they had picked that pith helmet as kind of a decorative measure. Same thing with the white horse's brow band. You can see them coming from a distance. But the officers found as they went down the road that they were kind of awkward and clumsy. Um, they didn't, they shed off some of the rain, but they were quite, quite hard to wear and stuff. So uh, those ones are made of pure cork. So you can imagine how they'd absorb some of the rain after if you went through a week of raining. And that, um, back at our display, which we don't have here, they actually had little round pill boxes. They're kind of a small little saucer-like hat they'd wear when they're collecting firewood or doing chores. Those were probably not one of the worst hats that they had to choose from, but they had no sun protection or weather protection. So a lot of the guys would be, you know, out in the prairies, they'd be all sunburned, except for a little white circle on top of their heads. So, but anyways, but uh, that's basically the run through of the uniform and what the horses wear. Uh, we have more different things back at our camp there uh, set out of the officers of what it's like to live in the 1885 on a small uh, fort or encampment. So feel free to stop by, have a donut, come take a look, ask more questions if you like. And uh, thank you for coming out and enjoying.